last weekend, what impact from the manner of that victory over Leicester have for the rest of the season? Well, for us it was, of course, uh, as we said before the game, a uh, must-win game that he won just, just, just in the final second of the game. So, of course, it was a big joy and a big relief as well, especially because we were one nil down. And you see that uh, Leicester has only lost three games and twice against us. So I believe that we have done our job. Of course, it's Hull tomorrow. I guess that's a fixture that evokes some pretty strong memories for you. Yes, because we play them every year at the moment in the FA Cup and uh, uh, we played them in the final and uh, so we know them well and they are in a strong position in the championship but we know that the, the level in the championship has gone up tremendously and uh, today uh, we saw it against Burnley, you need top level performance to, to beat these teams. And just finally from me on, on your team news, what sort of side can we expect to see tomorrow afternoon? Strong side, uh, normal side. Arson, can I just check first of all uh, the injury situation with uh, Gabriel Koscielny, for example? Koscielny will be available. He has a test this today, but I think uh, uh, he will. He will test will be positive. Gabriel is still out. How long do you think he might be out? For? You know, at this stage. Honestly, uh, I believe uh, one more week he started. Uh, yesterday running, but he, I think he has one more week. I've asked you this a few times, so bear with me. Um, Jack Wilshire, uh, the latest on him and uh, your assessment of when he returns? Uh, I think uh, three, four <coughs> weeks. Um, Danny Welbeck, terrific to see him come off the bench and score the winner for you. Might he get a a bigger role, I'm not asking you to name your starting line but might he get a bigger role t tomorrow in the cup? Yes, he might, uh, he might start him, I haven't decided yet completely, but uh, it crosses my mind to start him tomorrow, yes. Um, would you almost rather that you were playing another Premier League game this weekend after such an important win last weekend to keep the momentum going? Would, would you rather? <laughs> yes, yes, uh, honestly yes, but the fixtures are the fixtures, you know, and uh, we cope with that. We are as well ha very happy to play an FA Cup game and uh, overall uh, what is in our mind is just the next game. I think we have created a, a momentum that you want to keep alive no matter what kind of competition you're in and uh, just win the next game and uh, take care of that momentum. Is this, if you like, the most exciting and challenging spell of the season in that you You've just beaten the Premier League leaders. You've got to defend your FA Cup tomorrow, and then of course you've got Barcelona in the, in the Champions League. It's a very exciting moment, and as well a very important one. And uh, it's a real test for for the squad and for our potential as well. And uh, to see how far we can go this season, I, I think uh, I'm very confident. But of course, uh, what matters is uh, to respond on the day of a game uh, with a top-level performance. Well, one defeat in your last ten in all competitions. If you could replicate that over the next ten, you'd we'll be, be happy. In decent shape, wouldn't you? Well, but uh, in the Premier League, I, I, I would say you need points, you know, and uh, the win is important. It's not not losing that uh, is important. And uh, FA Cup and Champions League, it's similar. So you want not only not to lose, you want to win. You said you'll put a strong side out, but. Are you going to be tempted to rest someone like Peter Cech ahead of the, the Barcelona game? Peter Cech, it's possible, yes, because uh, Ospina plays in the FA Cup and uh, he will not be involved tomorrow. OK. Um, I wonder what your view is on potentially scrapping FA Cup replays to, to ease fixture congestion, if you like, for the bigger clubs in the future. I'm now uh, vaccinated by the FA rules, you know, for such, after such a long time. So I, I have become uh, very conservatively English and uh, I'm quite a bit uh, nervous about changing the rules because I like them now <laughs> and uh, I believe as well uh, uh, it looks like we get always more money and we want to play less games, that's a little bit contradiction, you know. Next season you have even more money coming in, that means uh, on every, uh, in every single club we have 25 top-level players and uh, I'm convinced that all the clubs can uh, compete with the number of games you have to play and 
there's no real need for me to change the rules. This is the most traditional competition in England. Let's respect it and keep it as it is. Um, one last one for me. I mean, we've spoken about this before, but the FA and the Premier League will be meeting to discuss a potential winter break. Um, mm -hmm. I just wonder your thought. I know you love the Christmas period, but yes. w winter break generally, w where do you stand on I'm that? I'm nothing against it, but uh, then again, uh, you need to find uh, dates. If it is to shorten the break in the summer, I'm against it. You know, because uh, we face now uh, more and more uh, summer periods where we cannot prepare our teams uh, because the preparation is too short. And let's not forget that uh, the European Championship has gone to 24 teams and even the European Championship now uh, is uh, one month. Finishes the 10th of July. You start the Championship on beginning of August. So if it is to shorten that on top of that, I'm against it. If you can find a, a little break in winter after Christmas, I'm, I'm happy. It's your 100th FA Cup game tomorrow. Well, what does the competition mean to you? You've spoken a little bit about its significance. Look, I, uh, I, I believe the first game on television I saw was FA Cup game in France because we had no television and uh, we had to go to school where we had the black and white uh, screen and uh, we could watch the VFA Cup uh, final. So at that time I never imagined that I would play 100 FA Cup games. And uh, it's a privilege because uh, 100 uh, is quite a big number. And uh, we have done well as well always in VFA Cup most of the time. So I will want to defend my record tomorrow. What's the possibility of El Nenny starting against Hull and how has he settled in? Look, you have asked me already for two, three, so <laughs> finally you, I'll give you the team. <laughs> We're getting there. <laughs> El Nenny has a good chance to play tomorrow. Because he's ready now. He's worked very hard and uh, uh, it's a good test uh, uh, for me to see him as well. And uh, I think he's fighting now for a regular place in the team and I consider him ready like anybody else. He will have a good chance to play tomorrow. Hull are doing well, as you've mentioned. They don't tend to concede a lot, do they, of late? Their, their defence has been very strong. Yes, because they play together for a long time. And uh, let's not forget, if you go through the team uh, of Hull, they all played in the Premier League. They were only Premier League players, even on the bench. So uh, I consider them as a Premier League team. Awesome. What's your view on a possible bonus for teams in the Premier League that finish in a qualification position for the Europa League in order to keep the coefficient points strong for England, which would obviously then have a benefit for teams getting into the Champions League as well? Look, we had that, uh, that chat uh, many times at the uh, meetings in Geneva when we had the European managers meeting. I think the best uh, incentive is uh, that you can qualify for the Champions League, what we decided and demanded and got. So I don't see why we need on top of that uh, special bonuses for teams who are already very rich. You know, I think it's an opportunity for us to do well in Europe. And uh, all the teams who fight, uh, all the English teams who play in the Europa League, uh, I'm sure want to win it because uh, you qualify directly for the Champions League as well and you win the trophy. I don't think you need a, a special bonus on top of that. Arsene, um, Danny Welbeck has come back and scored last weekend. Um, what do you think you learnt about him in terms of his mental resilience and how he's been able to cope with such a long-term injury? I believe it's always a good observation of a character of, and the resilience of a person when he's injured for such a long time. And uh, you look, how does he resist to that stress not to uh, be capable to play? How much uh, can he respond with the effort he puts in his rehab? And how can, uh, focused can he be every day when you go slowly, step by step? And as well, uh, in Danny's case, he had a few setbacks. <coughs> when he thought he would come back, because let's not forget he got injured in April, but we prepared him for the FA Cup final. And uh, he had a setback, a huge setback, and uh, I, I think he has become a stronger man with what happened to him. 
And how much do you think there's left in the tank? How much better do you think he can get? Uh, a lot better because he's the right age for a player. He's 25 years old. He has now uh, already experience. Physically, he's back uh, completely to his best. So I, I believe uh, the best is to come for him. Usually you would say, you know, I'm not, not going to focus on the next game, I'm just focusing on this one that's coming up, but mm -hmm. with Barcelona being on Tuesday, is there part of you that's, that's got attention to that? Not really, no. I, I consider more that the FA Cup is for me an opportunity as well to play, uh, to see some players, you know, to, who have not played recently, like uh, we spoke about El Neni. Uh, it has been decided before that Ospina will play, so it's just a coincidence, but for me it's a very important game. The best way to prepare Barcelona is to beat Hull tomorrow. If we don't do that, uh, we put ourselves in a very bad position to, to prepare Barcelona. You know, As I told you, the momentum is important. And uh, we have to show that mentally we are capable to win and to focus on every single game. And you mentioned about Hull when, when you were drawn against them, that it was familiar territory. Mm. Was the part of you that, were you rolling your eyes at that or were you smiling? Smiling, because uh, uh, it's as well Steve Bruce and Steve Bruce, let's not forget, we had already re the replay with Sheffield United, he was manager at the time. So uh, we played a few times against each other now. Austin, um, Matty Debushi has been speaking this week in which he said that you personally blocked a loan move for him to go to Manchester United, is that true? I hope that's not surprising to you. <laughs> <laughs> if Man United wants to buy a player, uh, but uh, uh, you, you loan players out to clubs who have not the resources, but uh, not to direct opponents, uh, it looks... Uh, uh, was nothing shocking in that, and it's true, I stand up for that, yes. Were you surprised they even tried it? <laughs> I was surprised, yes, by the move, but uh, look, uh, can I understand it, but I, I found that uh, logical. Um, <coughs> just looking at Hull, obviously you, you beat them in the final two years ago, and it was only after that game that the club confirmed that you were signing a new contract here. I just wondered if you lost that final. <laughs> I don't know. Might you have gone? I don't know, honestly, I don't know. But was it up in the air in your mind at that time about whether you would stay or not? It was up in the air, it was for to give everything to win the final and after to reflect on uh, on it if we had lost it, I don't know. Honestly, uh, I don't know because usually I respect my contracts and I fight uh, for everything and I think uh, as well to say to you that uh, 17 years uh, in a club depend just on uh, one cup final, so it's better you don't go to the final then, you know, so uh, you don't have that uh, problem, but it would have been a problem, would we not have won, yes, because it would have been a massive disappointment for everybody, but we won. But it did feel like a, a really big turning point, that final, for you personally and for the club. Mm. Yes, of course, because uh, people want uh, Today, in a modern job, you have always to explain on what you do not achieve, you know. What you achieve uh, is always known, but you have always to explain why you do not this, uh, why you do not that, uh, why did you not win this. Yes, of course, would have been a problem. Thank you very much. What was that game, that first game, by the way, in the FA Cup? Can you I, I, I don't remember, I was too young. You know? <laughs> uh, it's funny because I did an interview yesterday with uh, uh, some people from EFA and they asked me about the history of the English game and the players I remember, I, the first three players I remember are the uh, 1966 players. Bobby Charlton, uh, Bob Moore, uh, this, uh, Styles, all these players, you know, who, first, who played uh, before that I saw nine years old, ten years old, uh, some FA Cup finals, but I don't even remember what teams he got. Might have been Tottenham. <laughs> Might have been. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm not sure about that. <laughs>